Okay. So I'm taking this out of the flattening jig, and you can see I've got this nice taper here. So what I do is I just sight down and make sure the limb is fairly straight. Now for this bow, because we're trying to emulate a wooden bow, especially a self bow, what you want to do is actually leave some of this. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. We're not putting recurves. So when this is strung, even if it's a little crooked, as long as the points line up with the handle, then it'll all come out in the end. So the most important thing is just that the points line up. So, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat and flatten up this other one. So you can see that right off the handle, the limb is going to be fairly thin and get even thinner to the tip. Okay, now what I'm going to do is heat up this center section. I want to heat not only this six inch section here, but about an inch on either side. So this is going to become our handle, and about an inch on either side combined with some of this, that's going to become our fades. Now the fades or fade outs are very important. What we're looking to do is make a nice transition from the limb into the handle. If there's too sharp a crease here, what will happen is that this will be a weak point and the limb could just fold over right at the handle or it could break here. So what we're trying to do is re-establish this handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, I've got my heat gun over here, and I'm going to be holding this over the heat gun and just passing it along until it heats up. And once it's heated up enough, I'm going to bring it back here, and with this towel, you could use any hot pad, I'm going to press the handle. Another thing I'm doing is I'm pushing down on both limbs while I do this so that the limbs, if they got twisted at all, they would flatten out and they would even out right here in the handle. So, let's do that. Okay, so you can see how flexible this is. What we're doing is you see it's returned to its round shape. So you just want to go and press. And you want to press in, not away from where you're holding, because you don't want to stretch the handle out and weaken it. So it's going to start getting to the point where it's not going to want to press as much. So that means it's pretty much set about as much as you can do. So once it's gotten to that point, you can see it's a little narrower than it was before and a little wider. just want to pull the bow forward a little bit. Because this bow has a little bit of reflex to it in the handle. So we're establishing a nice rounded handle section. So you're going for about a two to three inch reflex on this. So once you've got that, you just need to go back and sight down the bow, make sure that this is straight. And then once it is, you just let it cool. And then we're going to go on to working on the tips of the bow. All right, so here the handle is set. And you can kind of see if I pull the tips in, as if this were strung up. This is the tiller that we're looking at. Now, what we're going to be doing now is heating up the last nine inches of each end, one at a time, and we're going to be 
crimping it at an angle. So we're going to be tapering these tips, except instead of cutting a V out, we're going to be heating this up and using some sort of clamp, we're going to be pinching it like this so that we remove about the same amount that a V would have taken away. What we're also doing with this is that this section is going to need to be a little thicker and then it's going to taper down to the tip so that from the front the limb is going to come out from the handle come out to about this mark and then it's going to dip in you know so we're going to have thinner tips on this now what I'm using for this is kind of a tip clamp I also use these for putting sears you know, if I'm going to form sears directly out of PVC and what this is is just two one by two pieces that are put together with a hinge and this one is nine inches long that way it'll work with this nine inch section we have here if you don't have one of these and you don't want to make one of these all you need are two boards you could use your flattening jig and your flattening board and just go on the end mark off nine inches and just use that instead this is a little less cumbersome and a little easier to work with but any way you want to do it is fine so i'm going to start by just heating up the pipe until this you know returns to its full shape 